That looks like where we're gonna have to stay. Nice little spot right here in the all the thick bush. My only worry is hopefully there's not too many spiders. There's a lot of spiders in these parts. Nice little fire pit. Home sweet home for the next 24 hours. What do you think? Let's do it. Been looking forward to this. Yeah. Let's take a look closer. We're looking for a spot right now along the river to sleep. We're going to stay here for about 24 hours. Now the question is, we don't know yet whether or not we're going to stay literally on the edge or on the boat, but we're going to figure out something. Uh, the only reason we wouldn't sleep right here on the edge is because some of these areas are absolutely loaded with spiders. And uh, we're not exactly super scared of them. I just don't want to be getting all bit up by spiders all night. We got a fire because it's going to get cold tonight. I say we stay down by the water. What do you think? Yeah, I think so too. There was another pit down there. This is kind of cool because you got like a little secluded. You got like a little secluded spot, but I think it's cooler by the water. A little bit angled. Yeah, we're gonna sleep at a a good angle. Pretty good angle, sleep but almost sitting up. <laughs> All right, so we got some chairs and uh, I don't know if Adrian told you this, but we didn't bring any food, so oh out, yeah, out there somewhere there's a big fish waiting on us. <laughs> so we brought absolutely zero food with us on this trip. Literally, we're out here for 24 hours, and we're only going to survive off of what we go ahead and uh, catch out of the water. So tonight, we're going to try our luck at catching some big stripers or something, and then there's also some trout in these waters. So something tonight in these waters is going to be our meal. There's going to be a lot of spiders. You already see one? I see them all over already. Where's one at? Okay. Oh, snap. <laughs> <Right there. laughs> one tried to get you right there, didn't he? Yeah, we'll I gotta zoom in on one. Look at right there. Where at? There's oh yeah, I see him. Little wolf spider They're everywhere. But. They'll bite you too. It's not like a baby eye. Yeah. It is. Thought it was a duck at first. <laughs> well, like I said, depending on how many spiders are out here, depends whether or not we sleep right here or we just park the boat and put the cots on the front of the boat and sleep right there. Because, uh, Spider bites are no fun. I've been bit a couple times by a few spiders and uh, just like everything else it just swells up and it's no fun Let's See what we got here Got herself a nice cop Heck yeah. yeah Looking ready And then what are we gonna cook the fish on today? Right here we have a little kit. Oh yeah. So the fish we plan on catching is gonna be a lot bigger than this thing. So we'll throw a fillet on here. <laughs> it Rotisserie it up over the fire, huh? Target species, there's trout, there's stripers, bass. Because we didn't bring any food, if we catch a bass, we're gonna eat a bass, whatever we catch. Yep, everything's on the menu today. That's it. All right. Throw out some of that wood too. We got wood back there, right? Our method of cooking today is going to be just some standard firewood. Let's see what kind of wood it is. Sustainably sourced. It doesn't say what kind of what kind of wood, but we got wood. Looks like home to me. Does it to you? Oh yeah. Last thing our bags I ain't gonna open them up just in case there's gonna be some spiders climbing on them end up getting in our bag all right here we go home sweet home we set you up and now we're on mission gotta find ourselves dinner because if we don't catch any fish then we ain't eating nothing let's go catch dinner come back barbecue whatever we're gonna do it's our first time doing this. We've stayed the night fishing before all night, but we've never like set up camp before and uh, tried to cook up fish out here along the river. So things are going to get really interesting. And it's going to be interesting to see if we can catch. It's been a long time since I've been out here. So let's see if the fish are biting. 
<laughs> Almost got just just missed it. <laughs> I was waiting for the camera to turn on. It took forever. All right, so big poles, big reels equal we're big going fish. After 20, 30 pounders, 40 pounders, if we're really lucky. And because there's really big fish in these waters, it takes really big baits to find these fish. So we've got a whole plethora of really big trout imitating baits. We're gonna see if we can uh, catch them. Stuff like this seems to work. This one, the paint chipped off it a little bit, but just little glide baits and stuff and heavy equipment. Man, camp over there is already looking all comfortable, isn't it? Almost broke it. The wind took it. <laughs> All right, so we're out here throwing big baits. So we're gonna fish till it gets dark and hopefully we get some. Yep, might troll around a little bit, but right now, while the bite should be good, we're gonna cast around and see if we can catch one. So we've been throwing big baits for about an hour and a half, two hours, few hours, something like that, time flies. And we haven't even got a bite yet. We need to catch something. So hopefully we have something to take to camp because as of right now, we're hurting. There's no bugs, which is a great thing. Those of you on the East Coast, you're not used to that. The sun starts to go down, you just get chewed up. Yeah, we're all good to go. There's hardly any bugs here. It's great. Is the full moon good for fishing or bad? It should be good. Good for night video wise with a full moon? Well, it's not. You guys comment down below what you think. Is, the Is full that moon good, good for or fishing bad? or bad, guys? Dang, this camera zoomed in pretty good on it. Does it? Beautiful. People have been saying the moon's turning red. Have you heard about that? <laughs> I don't know. I've heard so many different things. Somebody said that there was some solar flares on the sun and power was going out. All kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know what to believe anymore. Look at these rocky ledges. They're pretty amazing. You see a bunch of uh, bighorn sheep up there. Sometimes they slip and fall and people will find dead heads along the bottom. One of our buddies found one. Yeah, we're pretty much right here in the Grand Canyon in a way. It's the same water that cut the Grand Canyon. Super cold, super clean, and uh, there's some real big fish in here. But before the sun goes down, we might need to catch yourself just something to eat at night so that we don't starve, you know? 24 hours is hard. Let's do it. <laughs> so when there's big fish, you gotta use big baits. So we're using the biggest bait. What do you plan on catching with that, Megalodon? The Loch Ness Monster. So it looks like a giant snake in the water, and I guess stripers eat snakes. So we're gonna see, test our luck. Now, let's see if we can catch something with it. For those of you that watched our last video, the ice fishing video, we appreciate that. A lot of people don't like ice fishing, surprising. You can get hundreds of thousands of views on one thing, switch over to ice fishing, and it's like 5,000. <laughs> so, a lot of people, I guess, Vegas, and, and a lot of our fans are from the desert. They see that ice fishing, and they're like, nope. It's all good. We appreciate you tuning into this one. That's all that matters. It is officially dark now. So uh, now we're just gonna troll around and see if we can catch a night bite. It's gonna be a full moon tonight and everybody's saying it should be a good one. So if someone starts hooting and hollering, they got a fish. <laughs> hooting and hollering. Hooting and hollering. <laughs> <laughs> nope, he's on. He's on? I think he's on. I hope, I hope so. he's not tangling these poles, but he's going to the left. Is he? Oh man. Oh yeah, it's a fish. It's a good one. Did you cross? Yeah, I don't think he's caught it though. I don't really care if it did or not. We're gonna get him in. We got one. Yeah. We got one, folks. All right. Oh yeah. I can't even see you. <laughs> All right, got on the other side of that pole. There we go. This is what we've been after right here, guys. Oh yeah, that's the perfect. Oh. <laughs> Don't let him beat up my lure too much. Okay, hey, I'm gonna set this pole down and grab. And that is what we are going to eat. It's not not it's not over 20, so we don't feel too bad about it. We were worried if we caught something over 20 pounds. Don't want to break my lure. Gosh dang, yeah, he got hooked good. I can grab him by the mouth. There it goes. <laughs> there it is, guys. Big striper. What would you say this one weighs? Probably. I'm thinking that's 15. 
Yeah, I'd say about 15 pounds. 15 pounder. He's not quite 20. Let's see, hold him up sideways. Get a better grip. These guys are strong, guys. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Nothing beats a good old fire. It's been forever since I've sat around a campfire. When's the last time you have? It's been a while, six months or so. Six months? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, got war machine right there waiting for us for the morning. Morning ride back. Got my sleeping bag all folded up. And then we got the stuff to cook with. We were going to cook it for dinner, that striper. We were actually going to cook it for dinner, but it took us a while to catch one. Uh, they're pretty difficult to catch. So uh, after hours of trying, we finally caught one and we're just too tired to fillet it and everything and it's dark. So we're just going to skip dinner. In the morning, we're going to fillet it, get it going and have a nice breakfast. We're just warming up because it's pretty dang cold out here. Yeah, sounds like a plan. This fire's nice. It's been a long time. <laughs> you were wearing the croc still, yeah. although it's cold, so you're saying your feet were freezing. My feet got wet, so <laughs> they got wet? Yeah, well, we were catching that, that striper they got splashed and wet, so they were pretty cold, so this feels good. Oh yeah. What's crazy is there's spiders all over the place around here. And then right when we were pulling up we saw some eyeballs right here by our camp. We weren't sure if it was a raccoon. Or if it was like a muskrat or a beaver or the infamous Yarona we were hearing earlier. Yarona. Yeah, yeah. Yarona. Been a bobcat. Oh, it could have been. It looked like a little bobcat. <laughs> there's mountain lions out here too, so we gotta keep our eyes peeled. And there's also the chupacabra, so. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're gonna keep them peeled. It's about time to call it a night, isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna call it. <laughs> go to bed and we'll see you guys in the morning for breakfast get the fish on on some coals and cook it up yes sir uh, it got cold last night yeah it's time it got freezing cold last night it got like a lot of dew and stuff you can see it right there in the fish finder yeah so we decided to sleep on the on the boat. Spiders are everywhere. There's a whole lot of spiders. So we threw the cots on top of the boat and stuff and we slept right here. The sun's starting to come up. It's time to get up and uh, cook up some fish. This is where things are about to get real. We're about to eat some good old breakfast. All right, we're gonna get this fire rolling, get that fish filleted up. We're gonna get that big old fish out, get a nice chunk of filet off of them, season them up with salt, pepper, and that's it. Right over the open flame. All right, so we got the fire going. Is that our platform and filet? Yep. We got our fish. Nice, what do you think? Probably 13, 14 pounder maybe. Yeah. Like we say, we don't keep them all the time. We don't like to. Uh, too often, but this is just a good eater size. There's tons of them in this lake this big. And, uh, As a matter of fact, yeah. after nine years of living here, this is the first one. Yeah, this is the first one that I've ever caught and kept here after nine years. I'm usually pretty good about catch and release, but I know you guys want to see one, so this is a perfect eater size out of this place. It's not quite trophy, it's a good eater. This is our grill of choice. I mean, we could cook a lot of them, but I don't think we're going to eat that much. How much of them you want to eat right now? I'll just lamb right there because that's yeah. yeah probably that just for right now yeah the rest will take home and the family yeah probably about right there huh yeah it's about right i guess we can gut him out here too to see what he has in his belly yeah we're definitely gonna do that that's not very sharp so this is a survival type challenge um coming out here a lot of people do these where you spend 24 hours or whatever overnight and see if you can survive off whatever you catch so this was pretty neat to be able to catch something to eat and uh recently there was a podcast with joe rogan he had uh, cameron haynes on there and steven ranella and they were saying how hunters and fishermen and stuff they're they're less reliant on stores and and, and just government and stuff yeah less reliant on government they're thinkers self-sufficient thinkers. Yeah, they're self-sufficient 
you know deep thinkers they know how to survive like like this a lot of people won't know how to even start to come out and catch a fish like this beautiful piece of meat all right look at this there's a big chunk of fillet right there look at this piece of meat Oh yeah, look at that. You can borderline call that a steak. We're gonna go ahead and rinse it off. Man, you can tell when they're healthy. Now normally this bloodline stuff, you wanna uh, cut it out, but you can see all that fat within the bloodline of these fish. Super, super healthy fish. We'll go wash it off a little bit. All right, filet nice and washed, beautiful. Yep. What are you gonna do? You got them? We're just gonna see what's in his stomach. We got plenty of trash bags. When you clean fish out here at the lake, you can't leave guts and fish carcasses laying around. So we got plenty of trash bags, and that's what we're gonna throw all this in. But I already know people are gonna be curious. See what he's been eating. All right. If there's a fresh trout in there, we're gonna cook them up too. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not gonna show the complete cutting of the stomach because we don't want to get demonetized. But it had. Was a crawdad. Hmm. I would have guessed a lot hungry. more in there. That's why he was hungry. Yeah, he was real hungry. Crawdads. Okay, we got our grill all cleaned up. Burned all the germs off, washed it up. You can see our nice fillet right here. Fatty fish fillet. Man, it's crazy. Is Normally with fish, it's like just, you know, a little thing. That's like a steak, isn't it? That fish steak. So, I'm going to place it right in our little grill here. We got all our seasonings over here. Let's go check it out. Close it up. It's gonna hold our fish nice and perfect right there. We're gonna keep it simple because we're out here in the middle of nowhere. And as we always do, just keep it simple. So we got some black pepper. I'm gonna give it a good dosing of black pepper. Cause why not, you know? Pepper never hurt nobody. It's gonna be completely boneless. Wow. Yeah, we went behind the rib cage. Huh? Yep. And the, the front wouldn't have any bones either. And then I don't know where we got these little things, but we got this little micro salt shaker. Hopefully it'll pour out fast enough. But we're gonna put a little bit of salt. There it goes. <laughs> put a little bit of salt on this thing. Little micro salt shaker. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, we got everything we need, and we got our fish right here, ready to go. Here we go. The only problem with this is we're gonna have to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should have put like two sticks so we could set it. Yeah. Seniors thinking outside the box today, look at that, two rocks. <laughs> you just set it there. Let's see. Oh yeah, yep, burned my arm hairs off, we're good. I said not really. <laughs> well, that right there is why we went onto the boat last night. Because those little spiders, our sleeping bags have those little strings. And we saw a couple climbing up the strings and I was like, nope, see you later. So we went onto the boat. So I mentioned that podcast earlier. It was interesting to me because you know, Joe Rogan and Cameron Haynes and Stephen Ranella were all talking about how hunters and fishermen are like self-reliant. They can pretty much go out, catch fish, and take care of themselves. They were saying that down the line, that's something that the government doesn't necessarily want people to do. They want you to be reliant on stores and... <coughs> <laughs> They want you to be reliant on stores and having to go um, just pick your food up. Uh, in 50 years, are people going to be able to do this? You know, they're trying to ban hunting in a lot of places and even anti-fishing, which I don't understand. Interesting conversation. It's just they don't like self-reliance is what they don't like. They want you to be dependent upon them and uh, go to your grocery store and get the stuff that they put in there. What they're talking about a lot is the terminology being used. It's like trophy hunting and 
when somebody's not very familiar with the idea of hunting and what stuff like what we do like right now is uh they'll use terminology like that so that the public that doesn't know and doesn't watch these videos and doesn't hear and see what people are really doing when they're hunting uh they're gonna create their own opinion and uh it's not the the full story so you know you you can't always trust what you see right when you see it the first time you got to use your own mind and your, to do your own investigating and form your own opinion because if you're just going to go ahead and figure out your opinion based off the first piece of knowledge you hear then uh you don't get the full story a lot of states are starting to release wolves back into their states and when they release wolves their elk populations take a massive hit because wolves kill elk like they're just really good hunters deer populations drop and uh, elk elk herds drop so when elk herds drop they no longer need hunters because hunters go out there and, and they kind of manage the populations of these animals when wolves go out there they just kill they even kill for fun sometimes and what that does is it creates a situation where the numbers are so low they don't need hunters anymore and it's almost like an attack on hunters they would rather the wolves go out there and you know, kill them for fun and lower the numbers. They say it's trophy hunting because people do keep the antlers, but at least we feed our families and, you so, know, we eat, we eat the meat and enjoy the hunts. So, an uh, interesting fact that a lot of people don't know is when Christopher Columbus, his boat hit the shores of the Americas, there are more deer and elk out there running around our deserts now than there ever used to be. And that's just because of conservation. That's because of people going out there and hunting. So yeah, you know, I'm not someone that says there shouldn't be any wolves. The problem is that when when conservationists and people we give a little, they just want to keep taking. So they're going to keep wanting to take and take and take. And when those wolves start walking around and out there hunting and killing too many elk and too many deer and stuff like that, they're not going to let us hunt them is the problem a lot of times or at least they don't want to let us hunt them and in that case you just create a situation where you've got a lot of wolves and a whole lot less elk and a whole lot less deer and a whole lot less renewable resources out there so it's just like every other animal just like a mountain lion just like a coyote just like a wolf just like a deer it's got to be managed and hunted with quotas with seasons and uh, if you don't do that it's just a recipe for disaster yeah, so we listened to their podcast on the way out here, so that's why it's kind of fresh on our mind. We were thinking about it. It's pretty interesting stuff. We've been thinking about that for a long time, too. Slowly, hunting is starting to get, you know, pressured. Like mountain lion hunting is a big one. Yeah. You've got to manage mountain lion populations, or it does the same thing the wolves do. If there's too many predators, then there's not a whole lot of food out there for everyone to eat. There's a reason coyotes. why coyotes, there, there's no season on them, there's no limit or anything because coyotes, they're pesky little guys and they'll eat everything around here, so they actually like hunters to go manage them. Other than all that wolf talk though, it's hard, it's impossible to beat coming out in the wilderness and sitting by a nice warm fire when it's been cold and having your breakfast right there that you know exactly where it's been born, what it's been eating, and uh, what this fish has done for its whole life. You know how it's been caught, how it's been ethically harvested, cleaned, and ends up right here being cooked up and about to end up in your body. We got this wood at a gas station on the way over here, and uh, I'll tell you guys what, this wood is not good at all. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of rules around here, so you know i'm sure there's laws and stuff regulating whether or not you can touch all these bushes the second we chop anything down or burn anything that that is here we'll probably end up having somebody knock on our door so so anyone out there calling the cops you know or not <laughs> <laughs> the fish looks done i was hoping you didn't just grab that part and burn the heck out of it <laughs> <laughs> a little bit smarter than that i hope <laughs> push this meat off of those poles. It's nice and flaky. Precision. Perfect. Now knock all that meat off. That's all our season mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> that in there. All right. Perfect. Heck yeah. Looks good. There it is. 
finished product. Take a bite, how's it taste? Oh yeah, that's good. Is it? That's really good. I'll bring our chairs over here. Yeah, we'll set it right here so we got like almost a little table. It doesn't get better than this. It doesn't get any better than this. Right here by the water, you can hear all the birds singing and making noises. Go ahead and see. Let me get some of that. Nice and flaky. Nice white meat. Look at that. Wow, that's pretty good. Is it good? There's one thing we forgot. I, I love how the outside's like charred. Lemon. You gotta have the lemon. We forgot it. And the hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. just for that roughing it, is it pretty good? Oh, man, that's delicious right there. That's some of the best I think I've ever wow. eaten, if I'm gonna be honest. Some of the best striped bread I've had, seriously. Wow. In there? I'm sitting there eating it. You wanna help me take a bite? <laughs> you want to help me take a bite? <laughs> all right. Let's see. Senior was over there already eating it. I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> I gotta do my taste it. Oh man, that is grade A right there. This is delicious. And we didn't eat dinner last night. No dinner, nothing. So we're right here hungry. This is impressive. Like you said though, a little bit of lemon would make it a hundred out of 10. But right now this is really good. It's way better than I thought. Yeah, I thought it was gonna taste like burnt wood. <laughs> <laughs> it's way better than I thought, it's delicious. My eyes look all swollen. Slept like junk last night. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, I mentioned before our ice fishing video. It's a pretty cool video. We had fun. We'll leave the link right here. Check out that ice fishing video. We also did a little catch and cook with some friends up in uh, southern Utah. Good time. It's about four hours from Vegas. Ice fishing is, is something you got to try at least once in your life. It's a really good time. But as far as this goes, this is one of the best catching cooks I've ever done. It's delicious. This is super good. A little bit of lemon, and it would have been really, really good. But just for being out here over an open fire, the food turns out great. Just real simple, too, just salt and pepper. If we really doctored it up, a little bit of hot sauce, a little bit of lemon or something, and you'd have a gourmet meal right here. Listening, listening to the ducks and the birds singing and stuff in the morning. Nice, cool weather. It seriously doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, so 100% recommendation. Get your family out here, get your kids out here. Husbands, wives, whoever. Or anywhere. So it doesn't have to be on the shores of a remote area. There's a lot of places uh, in big cities where they give fishing opportunity, where they'll stop trout, or they'll do these things. And you can take a kid out there and they got grills where you can cook fish over oh, a fire yeah, too. urban lakes. Yeah. Boulder City, Sunset Park, um, Floyd Lamb. Floyd Lamb Park, there's tons in Vegas and there's tons all around the country in a bunch of big cities. So just as simple as a good Google search, we'll show you the ponds. You know, a lot of times they'll have uh, information out there on when they stock and you don't have to come out here in a very remote area and do it like this. You know, you can go in the city, believe it or not, and have plenty of great fishing opportunity to go and cook over an open flame and maybe even camp out. So uh, I just definitely recommend this, you know, especially if you got kids or young people, and it doesn't have to be young. Anybody who's never done this before, this to them, even just out here catching something and eating what you catch will be the experience of a lifetime. You might change somebody's life to turn to a conservationist and you know start pursuing stuff in the outdoors instead of video games and instead of maybe gangs or drugs or bad stuff so yep. they, there's an old saying that when you get a kid in the fishing or someone in the fishing that they won't have time or money for doing bad things like drugs so I'll tell you it's true though I stay broke by fishing poles and gas money and everything but it's worth it that's good advice uh, my recommendation stay wild stay outdoors with everything that's going on if anything ever hits the fan just know how to find your food purify your water be good to people be good to your neighbors if it ever hits the fan you just you know what to do and you guys know there's a lot going on in the news a lot of crazy stuff so i've said this months back years back always have food stored in your home 
a little bit of extra water in case anything happens. A uh, quick story in Vegas, power went out one day, internet dropped. So no phones working, no power, no anything. And it went on for like four hours. So we were like, uh-oh, did we just get hit by a nuke? You know, you just think the worst. <laughs> so Adrian, he, he jams down to the gas station um, to go get gas because our truck was on E. We had just got back from a trip. He goes to get gas and there's no gas. None of the pumps work. Nothing worked. There's no electricity. There's there's no phones. There was stop nothing. Lights. The stop lights didn't work. Yeah, the stop lights didn't work. The stop lights didn't work. The gas doesn't pump. You don't realize how dependent you are upon everything until something something small like that happens. So just stay ready. You know, that's all yeah. you can say. Stay ready. No phones, no electricity, no gas. It, it was a pretty it was crazy weird. situation. It was very, very weird. That's for sure. All right, now bust out the hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys watching. We're not just going to have you guys sitting here watching us eat this whole meal. Because you guys are going to get too hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be responsible. You guys eating up all the food in the house. Yep. <laughs> so, I appreciate you guys for watching this video. As you can see, we're still eating, enjoying our time. But um, we're about to call it a day. We've been out here for quite a while now. So, it's about time we get back to the city. What's so funny and weird is when you're out here and enjoy a peaceful night and enjoy just being out in nature when you get back into vegas or a big city where there's traffic and everything we're going to be sitting there all disgruntled a little bit kind of mad but you get used to it that's why you got to have these breaks away from the city from time to time i appreciate you guys for watching this video once again you know try to get somebody outdoors try to expose people to this and if you've never been exposed and don't have anybody to teach you or to bring you along that's what these youtube videos are for they're meant to kind of teach you and show you how easy it is and the opportunities that are right here that a lot of people don't know about. So they're all throughout this country, all throughout everywhere in the world. I guarantee you, you have plenty of opportunities closer than you might think you have. So get someone outdoors, enjoy what God put on this earth for us to enjoy. Sweaters, the hats and everything is how we buy all this equipment and how we keep going. So mm -hmm. we appreciate you guys very much for that. Thank you guys, 100%. But I appreciate you guys for watching this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you outdoors.